Hi, I'm Kim. Now, have you ever wondered what all these funny numbers are on your sewing machine needles when you buy them? And I know you can't see this, but I'm gonna switch camera in a minute and explain. There are lots of different type of sewing machine needles, but there's lots of different types of numbers and they do mean something. So I'm gonna switch camera and we're gonna talk about that today. So let me just switch. And if you're wondering why I have quite a husky voice at the moment is because I've had laryngitis and I lost my voice. So it's just coming back again. So I'm back to doing a little bit of recording for you and to teach you some next stuff. So let's have a look at this in more detail. So when you buy your sewing machine needles, you will see on the bottom of all of them or on the packet, it will give you a number. There are two numbers there. This one says 90 and 14. This particular one is a top stitch needle and it says 100 slash 16, okay? So all your sewing machine needles have a different sizing um, uh, numbering system. So let's go through what they are and then why you would use each of the numbers, okay? So first of all, now you're gonna find out how bad I am at drawing. The numbering system, uh, you've got two numbers, so let's just pick an 80, a size 80 needle, which is a slash 12. That's what you'll find is an 80 slash 12 or a 90 slash 14 or whatever the number system is. There are two numbers. This 80 is a metric system, okay? And that's what we normally find um, across Europe, that's the, the European numbering system and it is metric. Don't worry, I'm not getting too detailed. This one here is used by the US market, the States market, so hello to everybody watching in the States. So it's two numbering systems. But if we take the metric one for the moment, what that means is that the size of the needle is 0 0.8 millimeters. Okay, so if we had a 90 needle, let's just say a 90 slash 14, this metric would be 0 0.9 millimeters. Okay, and then if we had a 75 needle, which would be slash 11, we would have 0 0.75 millimeters. Okay, so you can see how that works, but where does it refer to? Okay, so this, <laughs> this is where my drawing is gonna fall down a hole but you're, you're gonna be fine, you're gonna be with me, you're gonna get what I'm talking about. So your needle, at the top, there is a thicker bit, and that is the shaft. No, it's not. <laughs> Sorry, it's the shank. <laughs> I was ahead of myself. That is the shank. <laughs> and that's where, if you've got incredibly good eyesight, um, if, you've, if you've got a, a, a child hanging about, they can read it, I can't with my eyes as they are. So magnifying glass, take a photo on your phone and enlarge it, get a magnifying glass, whatever. But on here, you will find that you've got the make of the needle and then you've got the number is print, well, it's not printed, it's etched out of the shank at the top of the needle there. So if you can see that, <laughs> <laughs> you're a better better woman or man than I am, but that's where the number is. Okay, so that's the thicker bit at the, the top of the needle. Then you have, then you have the shaft of the needle. So that's this bit here, the shaft. Okay, and then at the point, I told you I can't draw needles. <laughs> a bit, you understand what a needle looks like. So we've got the tip at the end, okay and we've got the shaft of the needle here. And that size, this 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.75, or whatever it is, relates to the diameter of this shaft, okay? So now you know that, now you can start thinking about, well, how am I gonna use this? So let me go on to the next bit and start explaining how all the numbers work and how it relates to your sewing and how it will make your sewing so much better if you understand this numbering system. It's really confusing when you're a beginner, I know that. So that's why I've recorded this. So I'm gonna put that to one side for a minute. So we've got lots of sizes. So your needle sizes start at 60 and that's a slash eight. Okay, and then they go to 70, 
and then we've got 75 and we've got 80 am I going to have enough paper I've got 90 then we've got 100 <laughs> 16 then we've got 110 and we've got 120 which is our 20 and then 130 which very oddly is a 21 don't ask me why that is like that okay so if we know that this bit so the numbers relates to the diameter of the shaft and I know this is sounding like a math lesson don't worry with, with sewers we can just have a little bit of understanding of this so if we know that this these numbers relate to how big or small the diameter of that shaft is all it's then saying is is that this is a fine needle okay and this is a thick needle all right there we go so when we have got fine needles um so they they are fine in their shaft and we got to our thick needles then that starts relating to the thickness of the fabric that we are going through but hang around for a bit don't click off here because there's something else i really need to explain to you but i'm going to explain the fabric first because it's not just the type of fabric there's more to it than that and then we've got to talk about thread so stick with me to the end of this so fine needles so if we've got a fine needle then we're talking about our really fine fabrics like our silk or our nylon or something like that down down here so our really fine flimsy floaty fabrics <laughs> that I never look good in why is it some people can look really good in silk but I don't I don't know why that is. Anyway, that's where those fine fabrics go to. And as we start creeping up, we start looking at the relative thickness of the fabric. So here, we might find our light cottons. Okay, so you might find your, cut, your cotton lawn would be great down here. So you know that fantastic cotton lawn we could get um, that would be fantastic for making a, a summer a blouse or summer shirt in. Not so great for quilts because it's too thin. All right, so if you're a quilter or you're beginning at quilting, don't go for cotton lawn. We need a medium weight cotton, but if you're looking at making clothes, then cotton lawn, fantastic. For your medium weight cottons, we're over here. Okay, or medium, um, medium weight fabrics, we're over here. So like your, <coughs> excuse me, your jersey fabrics. <coughs> I told you I've had laryngitis. Um, jersey fabrics here. Okay, so it's a medium weight fabric. All right. <coughs> and this is where, <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. This is where um, you, this is where your quilting cotton would be, right, right in the middle here. Okay, so that says if I've got a medium weight cotton, I'd be looking at this sort of 75, 80, 90, this, this kind of area. So the thicker the fabric, we start going up. So if I was using denim, for instance, I would be up here. If I was working with canvas or a really thick um, apron type fabric, like a, a, it's a cotton, a cotton twill or um, a drill, or something like that where we've got or a, um, a, a thick calico, that would all be up here, okay? Because it's a thicker fabric. Um, let's put drill or twill. Corduroy. How do you spell corduroy? I actually have no idea how you spell corduroy. Is that it? I don't know. Anyway, corduroy is up here somewhere. So we've got those thicker fabrics. So can you see we, we need our thicker needles to go through our thicker fabric? So it all starts making sense now. If, um, now I've had a couple of students coming through my classes who want to make sails for boats. Yeah, you know, you know, boat sails. <laughs> In which case we're talking about quite a thick sail fabric and you're gonna be up here somewhere, sail fabric. I didn't know what that's made of. Okay, but we're talking a really tough fabric. If you were sewing um, velvet curtains, for example, then you would definitely be up this end because velvet is pretty thick, especially curtain upholstery fabric. And this is the thing, you know, upholstery fabric is thicker, so we're up this end of the range. And if you were doing like net curtains, little floaty little wild net curtains, you're down this end, okay? So you're beginning to understand that and build up a picture. Now let me take it a little stage further. Okay, so we've got another couple of steps to go through, so bear with, keep, keep with me. 
So if I'm going to take my medium weight cotton, okay, let's just sit in the middle here. And then you know that, okay, it's a medium weight cotton. And Kim said that I need to be looking at about an 80 needle, an 80-12 needle. Okay, perfect. So when you're sewing two layers of cotton together, you've got, um, you need your 80 needle. But now what happens, let's just say you're making a little bag for yourself and you're making it out of your quilting weight cotton, your medium weight cotton, but now you're really getting um, into um, the handles. So when you've got your handles, you're starting to build up that bulk, okay? Um, and if you're building up that bulk, you get this, have I got any here that I can show you? Oh, here we are, look. We are at my cutting table. So here's a quilting uh, weight cotton. This is a lovely liberty. So going through two layers of cotton, that's our 80. But if I'm making a bag handle, for instance, I'm going to have it at least lay four layers. If I'm taking that bag handle and I'm doubling it up where it attaches to the bag, can you see how this is getting really thick. I mean, just grab some, some fabric that you've got and fold it up and feel the difference between your two layers and four or eight layers. And you might have some more there just depending on whatever it is you're stitching. So this is where our rules have to change a bit because your 80 needle or your 80 slash 12 is fine going through your two layers. But if you're going through lots of layers, we need to increase our needle size because it's got Harder work to do to go through all of those layers um, of fabric. You need a thicker needle to go through all of that. So if I was going up to um, this amount of fabric, I would definitely be looking at at least 100, probably 110 needle to get through all of that. And your needle type would come into play, but I'm not gonna cover this in this video, so watch out for that video on that one. Um, when I've recorded it, I will link it at the end of this one. But the thicker your fabric, if you're doubling up your fabric, which we do when we're hemming, for example, um, if we're making binding, if we're making straps for something, um, we're doubling up our fabric, so we need to increase our needle size, okay? And it's the, it's the biggest reason why your needles are breaking is because you've got two finer needles for whatever it is you're sewing. So if I had a 60 or a 70 in my machine and I was trying to sew that, your machine is gonna go, I don't like this and it's going to really struggle and try and get the needle through, but it'll end up breaking or it will just get to the fabric and start making a funny noise because it really does not like it. So that that's, the, I say the biggest reason why needles break is because you're using too fine a needle for the job in hand. So you really need to get used to um, changing out your needles and swapping your needles for whatever stage of your sewing project that you are at. And I tell you, I promise it makes your, your sewing, your stitching so much more pleasurable and it gets rid of that frustration, okay? So I promised you one more thing. Let's talk about thread for a minute because if you find um, that your thread is shredding, we need to have a look at the needle size we're using. So let's just say um, we've, let's just say we've got our two layers of our quilting fabric. So that immediately tells us we're around here somewhere, okay? If we've got that, and then we're talking about our thread, and let's just say we're, for this particular exercise, we're doing some applique, and we want a thicker thread to show up on our applique, okay? I'm not talking about quilting here, I'm just, because quilting has got more layers, I'm just talking about if we were putting a bit of applique on the top of this, and you'd have, you'd have your single layer, you'd have your um, bondage web underneath, and you'd have another layer of fabric, okay? So it's still relatively medium weight, so you might think 80 is fine, but now you want a quilting, um, a quilting thread or a thicker thread, th thicker thread, <laughs> thicker thread. If you're using a thicker thread, you actually need to go up a bit of your needle size up here because these thicker needle sizes have slightly bigger eyes and they will cope with the thicker thread, all right? So if you're still working down here with your sort of 75 needle 
and you find your um, your thread <laughs> thread is shredding. I can't say that. If you find that your thread is shredding, then up your needle size, and that'll help you immeasurably. Okay. And just one last thing is that if you find you're stitching along and big holes are appearing, then you need to come down a size, all right? Because you don't want big holes in your fabric. Um, yes, ultimately they do wash and um, wash out or iron out, but if you're getting big holes, that tells will tell you straight away that your needle sizes are too big. So if you don't know what the needle size is in your machine, good to have a little look. Um, and if it's making big holes, come down your little graph here okay so i really hope that has helped it's a really good idea to understand your needle sizes and swap your needles out don't forget that we have to change our needles after every eight hours of stitching um, or at the start of every new project whichever comes sooner needles go bent and blunt as you've seen in a previous video i'm sure if not i shall link it here for you so that you can watch that um but understanding your, your needle sizes makes such a big difference to your sewing projects and how you manage those. So I hope that's helped and I will look forward to seeing you next time. Bye bye for now. See you next time. Bye.